Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to CR6. This is week number five, and this will be the last season and the last series before we go into postseason. So get hyped, start cheering for your favorite team, and let's send it. Yeah, it's going to be an amazing series. We'll see some of the more common maps. Of course, the first map being up is Clubhouse, with the second of Villa and a bit of cafe if we do make it onto that russian battleground it's the t3 trifecta we've seen them all uh and it's gonna come down to how uh these teams decide to execute how well they can replicate their success we've seen so many of these maps we have a great benchmark for how these teams perform they are going to know how to play these maps going into this series it's going to be an absolute showdown and it really seems like the team that can bring out the most unique strategy is the teams that are winning. Now, we've also seen pretty much the exact opposite of that as well in play, where we're seeing teams, their strategies are crumbling around them. So they just do a Hail Mary. They enter into site and they start to win their 1v1 exchanges. And maybe that's another way we're going to see this engagement go. But what we can be certain of, it is going to be Clubhouse, our first map. Yeah, uh, Clubhouse, a very good strategic map. We've seen a lot of innovation, especially in North America on this map. Um, unfortunately, I would have liked to see some of the new maps. Oregon, we saw uh, in just the, the previous series an absolute dominant affair, but it has some amazing strategies that we haven't been able to see uh, all too often at this level. And it looks like we're not going to be seeing them today as uh, the first two maps to be banned out were Oregon and Theme Park. Nobody wanting to play those, as well as Consulate and Coastline. Uh, really typical things going into this match. I don't think that we're going to see anything uh, too out of the ordinary. It's just going to come down to uh, the adaptation from these teams. I, that's one thing that we say a lot. I know I probably sound like a broken record, but it's one of the key aspects that you want to watch out for. You want to look out for consistency on your players uh, for the uh, default strategies, and you want to see teams adapt and evolve to things going against them they can't just do the same thing over and over they can't just be robotic in their attacks they need to uh, be more fluid they need to adapt to what's going in front of them otherwise they're just going to get figured out and they're going to get counterplayed and the team that is more malleable will be the team that comes out on top Throughout these series, we've really seen a lot of these rosters struggle taking vertical pressure, whether it's from underneath utilizing maybe an Ash Breaching Charge or a set of Frag Grenades, especially here on Clubhouse when you're trying to deal with an active bandit trick in CCTV, or maybe it's taking that top floor or that second floor on Cafe and trying to push members out of Kitchen. I think that's going to be the big step today is what team is able to utilize that vertical destruction better is probably going to be the team that wins the series. Yeah, and a lot of that also comes down to the tempo. How well are they able to uh, set the tempo when they're on the attack? If you're the defense side, you typically determine where the engagements take place, where how you position your roamers, how you position your setup. Are you going to go for a very uh, vertical play like an SSG-style roam? Are you going to play uh, all on the basement side? Uh, it's up to you to decide. However, the attackers, uh, with them starting outside, they get to determine the tempo. And if they play lethargic and slow, uh, like we have seen some teams in previous series, they're just going to fall down and fall victim to the sixth defender of Father Time. If they're able to uh, take the tempo, take the game, take the uh, pacing of the match into their own hands, seize their own destiny, uh, that'll be a very good thing to see and a marker uh, that separates the good teams from the great teams as we look to move into our playoffs. That's a great point, but all of our teams are ready. All 10 players are hitting their check marks. So let's sign straight into Clubhouse where we'll be doing battle for our first map of this best of three series. And just to remind you, it is up to seven rounds. So as soon as you see that seven mark, you will confirm yourself a winner on map number one, unless we go over to overtime. That is going to be the exception to the rule, but 
who will we see removed as the first attacker? A lot of Thatcher bans have been in effect today, but the newest addition to Rainbow Six Seed, especially on the Hard Breacher side, his name is Ace. He's been removed a ton as well as Maverick, but as I love to call him, the bane of Rainbow Six Siege is no more here in Clubhouse. Yeah, we've seen Thatcher being a pretty much perma ban on almost every single map, uh, with the exception maybe being uh, Coastline, which relies less on the strategic 22nd meta and more on uh, your fragging potential. Now we see the second ban coming out as Montaigne. That is a very interesting thing to see. Uh, typically, we see either a Maverick or an Ace being banned. But Montaigne being banned uh, does throw a spanner in the works. It's interesting to see. Could that be a potential counter pick? Moving on to the defense side, it's a bit more linear. Uh, Valkyrie, one of the top operators being banned, and most likely, as this is T3, it's going to probably be a mirror band. And to add a bit of stakes to the line to, to really hammer this home, the winner of this match goes to your goes to the open playoffs and the loser unfortunately for them condolences they will go home that being said a lesion ban uh, i am looking at my notes i have never seen that happen uh it's not a very common operator what do you make of that so lesion bans are really common if you want to play monty but that's the thing monty is banned already so maybe it's just a comfortable pick we've seen a lot of lesion plays over the past few weeks because it's a one and a half time site and also lesion was a good component of the ssg style of rome but you can subsidize that almost with the malusi at this point so i'm not sure if that's the best ban maybe you're trying to get rid of a set of impact grenades for impact tricking honestly i have no idea but i'd love to find out yeah, uh, and while we do see Legion being banned common, uh, Legion being played commonly uh, when Malusi is banned, we don't see Malusi being banned all that often, uh, the exception being our previous series. Attack and uh, Malusi is, uh, I guess, the, the greatest showman of uh, anything you can do, I can do better. Uh, and she has the same gun uh, for a limited amount of time, and she has a gadget that has far more power than the Legion Drew Mines, and realistically, I don't see how that Legion ban is going to uh, factor into this match. However, we will see uh, an interesting setup coming from the defense. They will move uh, to CCTV cash as the first site, and we will see a double hard breach setup coming from their opponents. The ace, uh, very powerful. Uh, unlike a, a thermite, he has three gadgets as well as the ability to throw them simultaneously and from range. It makes bandit tricking very difficult. Uh, a Cade uh -oh. being on the line, it could be difficult to take those out. They are nearly invulnerable if you put them in the right places, and they might negate the fact that you have a Cowley on the board. As we see, one of those LV electric lances uh, going uh, out and not finding impact. That's going to be a great play uh, from the defense side as they move into this match. And NSU, they're going to have to adapt. They're going to have to recognize the strategies that their opponents are playing and find a way to open up that CCTV wall uh, by taking out, those uh, taking out those K charges. Attackers this is not team. looking good for the attackers of NSU. Those K charges will be put in invulnerable spots. The only one you can really blow up is the one that is over the drone hole, but you're going to need a perfectly banked frag grenade. And currently, they don't have any operators playing frag grenades, which means the attackers are forced to do a west clear. Now, this could work out well for them, but the problem is they really can't set up crossfires. So as a contingency plan, you're gonna have to rotate somebody over to the top crafter's garage and set up your 90 grade crossfire that way. But you're gonna have to burn out ADSs and you're gonna have to push away Jaeger as soon as possible. Because if you allow him to exist, he will exist for the entire round. Yeah, uh, the lack of a Capitao ban means that uh, attacking this garage position would be very easy if you had that operator in your hand. But NSU, they don't have that luxury. They don't have 
the utility specifically geared to a more garage side attack and while the cali can play these long angles uh the defense does not have to take these gunfights they have time on their side and with the adaptations not coming quick enough for the side of nsu time is running down the top clock is now ticking down to double digits and the defense with barely any expenditure of their utility uh, still multiple nitro cells multiple players on the board they are looking to take the first round and the first strike in this match well zay will do exactly that lighting up the scoreboard mad because bad is going to work his way on through and work his way into his own demise the nsu strategy is not working out well for them they seem perplexed confused almost dazed they have no idea how to push this and there's 30 seconds left and they're still on central stairs this might not be a good round for them but they are stacked up and they can bulldoze their way into the bomb site if they elect to do so but they can't even find their way into the bomb site right now they're just wasting so many times and the malusi one wolves is going to give away their position a nitro cell is going to go out it's going to do just a little bit of damage to ash but not enough to deer her whatsoever and here comes the death and it's going to be around zero clock and how on earth did that round go the way it was well lack of utility yeah that was just a great defensive play for the defenders they just set themselves up in a great position uh, and with no thatcher on the board they didn't have an opportunity to deal with those cali uh those cade charges because they didn't have the ability to open up that wall and because they didn't run a Zofia or, or more fragging lineups, uh, they weren't able to uh, deal with the Malusi charges. Only two explosive charges on Ash means that you, you don't have enough utility to spread amongst the rest of the team and you aren't able to find those crossfires. Not only that, but they had to adapt on the fly. They had to uh, change things up over the course of that match. And that allowed the defense to buy their time, to buy extra moments on the clock. And then once they recognized the, the very one-dimensional attack, the very linear push that NSU had, they were able to rotate their players over, let them walk into the smokes, into the crossfires, and into the waiting arms of their players. There was just absolutely nothing that the attackers could do. Now we move on to the second site. Uh, now we move on to gym bedroom. Uh, once again, I'm expecting just some amazing uh, strategic plays coming out from the defense. They're bringing the castle that we typically see, as well as that heartbreak denial. And uh, it's just looking so good. They showed uh, that they are a very uh, dominant team in terms of uh, exploiting the time in NSU. They'll need to seize control of that match. They'll need to uh, do what we were saying in the pregame and take tempo control. Otherwise, time as the sixth defender is going to be their biggest threat. Serum be doing battle here on the tertiary bomb site. Now the goal for the defenders is simple. You want to burn as much time as possible, but as well as hard reach gadgetry. And the thing with that latter part of that statement is you don't have impact grenades once again. So when the attackers go for their extension, trying to clear out the east side of the map into cash, well, those hard breaching gadgetry will be allowed to exist on those walls and open it up. Now, sure, you can go for a nitro cell trick, but that's very high risk. And those nitro cells tend to not, well, detonate the way you want to because fragmentation propagation is a little bit awkward in this game. Now, the east wall has been opened up, and it's tr another true extension in a cache, which means the attackers will get the east side of the map for free. Yeah, and they will be gaining control earlier rather than later. And a crucial aspect of that is that they're able to capitalize on that. They find a frag in through construction. That is the castle taken down. And while he doesn't have the best fragging weapon, it is still a gun on the side of the defense that is taken out. This is the map control that they need. This is the tempo that they need as they are mounting the horizontal take. Now, I don't know whether they'll be able to get the jacuzzi wall open. They have the Cali, but uh, with the Cade charges being able to uh, deploy two of them and out of the range of that explosive lance, uh, they might only have this one dimensional take and it'll rely on them winning their entries, winning their gunfights and forcing these crossfires that while a man down are still very 
Well, we approach 70 seconds left in the round. The attackers found the opening pick, but they've been unable to confirm anymore. And it's going to be a shutdown showdown here as NSU is going to fall. They weren't watching their flanks. They didn't do their due diligence with the flank drones. And a sea of blue is going to swarm the kill feed as they're going to win round number two. The attackers were in prime position to go for the execute, but they started to skip steps midway through that execute and it cost them their lives. Yeah, SHSU, they bided their time. They recognized the predicament that their opponents were in. And while the Jacuzzi wall was opened in the very late stages of that round, NSU were still funneled into a very one-dimensional play. Lost Olympian, credit to you, man. An absolutely stunning performance, as well as the Rome's coming out from many of these players we will go down to the basement site and a very interesting setup coming out no jaeger he's pretty much always picked but it looks to be a very roam heavy setup with information denial in the form of the mute as well as the mozzie malusi to slow players down in conjunction with the castle and while they may not be able to burn out Attackers the explosive and utility the with can. the usual uh, Jaeger and Wamai combination, they will be able to burn out the time if this is played correctly, but this is a very difficult strategy to play. You can't rely on the typical 20 second meta that we see. You're going to have to execute these roams to perfection, and if NSU are able to exploit that, if they're able to get their roam players, uh, in good fashion and in good tempo, there's not going to be much in the way of on-site resistance without that utility soak that we typically see. Ten seconds to go. Well, Al, I spy an SSG-style roam are technically a derivative of that, and it's going to be Legion. Since he is banned, it's going to be Malusi killing his spot. And something I think we say a ton, it's going to force the attackers into two positions. Are you going to rush the bomb site either from dirt tunnel or possibly oil or secret stairs? Or are you going to do the DZ style take and clear out the entire floor, working your way through mozzie pests as well as mute jammers? And actually, NSU looks like they're going for another option, something I didn't list. They're not going to be clearing that top floor, and they're going to be trying to execute straight into kitchen. Now, this is a perplexing strategy, and if they don't cross Attack their T's and dot here. their I's, Attack they might get caught out by a flank. Yeah. It'll be very difficult for both teams to manage. Uh, SHSU, they need to not overextend. They need to play safe. And if they show a chink in their armor, if their roamers don't position themselves excellently, they'll be taken down. This is high risk, high reward on both teams. And it'll come down to these 50-50 gunfights. If NSU are able to find a weakness, they'll be able to exploit that. And that'll conversely go for the defense side. It's exciting to see these teams bringing out such interesting strategies. But it will be the defenders finding the first frag. Is Zay just continuing his dominant performance on the, on the vigil. Zay is going to be the one that always seems to be getting the opening kills for his team. And SMG11 is going to find its own kill. And once again, NSU, they're starting to blunder away this round. They're overextending, putting themselves in very bad positions. And a myriad of kills once again, as it's a sea of orange now coming through that kill feed trying to counteract that sea of blue it is poor a super fetch in a 1v4 he's gonna work his way down these central stairs but he's making a ton of noise soon the defenders are gonna be on to his position and indeed they are the wide swing of the t5 that's we play dude that's gonna be him ending round number three yeah and nso they were just put into such nsu sorry pushed into such a difficult position and as such, a bit of confusion possibly on their players as the members of the defense just won every single one of their gunfights despite Superfetch staying alive into the late round, finding a single frag. It's a 1v4. Uh, time is on your opponent's side. They still have uh, swaths of map control. That's never going to happen. Uh, and that was a flawless defensive rotation. And uh, more than that, that was flawless play from the defense. They just look to be oh so prepared for this map. It just looks absolutely dominant.
uh, from the defense and side of SHSU and NSU, they need to seize tempo in their favor. They need to uh, find something going into this round to break this dominant form that this defensive have has been going. I have to be pretty critical of NSU for over skipping one step. They're not bringing Maverick. Maverick hasn't been banned. Monty was their ban. If you want to break down invulnerable Kaids, the only option you have is to Maverick trip out this wall. Now, some people are suggesting you can try to Cali Lance underneath, remaining. but if you put your Kaids in the appropriate position, that should never happen. So, you just have to keep that in mind moving forward. Maverick is probably, this actually probably is his best map, honestly, looking at it because you can safely Maverick trick 90% of these walls as well as top hatches. So NSU are just a little bit stuck in their ways. Yeah, and uh, this could be a symptom of the fact that he is pretty much permanently banned on this map. We don't see Maverick slipping through the ban phase on many of the maps that he is applicable on uh, because of that. Uh, and it... Uh, symptoms of the mirror being pretty much a uh, event apply to this as well. You don't see these operators being played when they're not banned because teams don't practice them. And NSU will once again, uh, on the other side. they they once again will be forced into a difficult position. The Cali is going out, but it's not going to do anything. You're not going to open up the CCTV wall and. Uh, NSU, they're just trying the same thing once again. They're trying to do exactly what they did in the first round, Attackers and it computer. didn't work out. And once again, they're forced into an adaptation. And SHSU, they just look so prepared, and they're just finding their friends. These things are not looking good once again for Team Orange. As two of their players were shut down on aggressive wide swings. Ash is going to think better about her life and rotate away from the Jacuzzi balcony. Look at the spread of the entire map. All of the attackers are basically set up in 1v1 scenarios with no possibility of refragging. This could be another huge oversight, and NSU is making a lot of mistakes. Now, throughout these five weeks, we've really seen NSU create better macro strategies, and maybe today they're not playing, you know, their 120% that we're used to, or maybe they're just not comfortable here on club. Yeah, we'll have to see that as it evolves, but a 3v5 and your explosives, uh, the majority of them taken out. Zay as well, finding a kill. This likely should be a kill from Zero, but that's a silver lining. That's that's just a, a, a consolation prize. Is Valak, oh my god, with the shotgun, able to find one, traded out by Superfetch, but this is just time going in the favor of the defense. A bit of overaggression from the side of FHSU, but they still have control of this map. You still have time ticking down. You don't have any of the explosives to deal with these Malusi Wubwubs, and those should be enough to just deny the position. As you can see, Superfect, he can't push up the stairs. Those are known. He has to push into Garage, into the waiting arms of the Cade, and it's just a a, a do or die situation damned if you do damned if you don't for the attackers in that position they need to try and use this maverick but it's round five it's been four rounds in dominating fashion for the defense side and even if they do find two attack rounds it's too little too late uh, in terms of this map as your defense they just look so dominant going into this series and the problem is the attackers aren't making adjustments on the fly. It is stemming from their six picks or lack of six picks, not bringing the appropriate operators to break down the defenders' lineups. Remember, in competitive siege, you can see five operators that your opponents are bringing. Now, in theory, they could six pick and bring an additional operator. But at the end of the day, you have a good understanding of the strategy that the opponents are going to be playing with. So that means you create counter strategies on the fly, especially after you've seen the majority of these bomb sites once already, and you couple that with VOD reviews, you should have a good understanding of how to break down these strategies. And right now, the NSU IGL isn't identifying the macro strategies and they aren't countering on the fly. Not saying that they can't do that here in round number five and round number six, because four two splits are very common. And given the fact that Sam Houston is going over to the tertiary bomb site, this is the best chance for NSU to pick up a round. Yeah, uh, they will be bringing out the Maverick this time around, and that is an adaptation that I wanted to yes, see. 
uh, after the first two sites. Uh, it is a, an Five operator that allows you to just not care that you have a cave. Yeah, uh, you do have to position a bit more carefully around those jammers in order to not take poke damage, but you should be able to open a uh, two external areas with the maverick charges if you have prepared to use that operator now one op one just angle into sight is more than enough and the side of nsu they should be able to adapt to that we can see those sam houston they've adapted as well they're not reinforcing cctv as that was one of the first things to go down as they had an ace in the previous round they've pulled back their control and they look to be playing even more passively but nsu they're going to be looking to breach this side of the map they should be able to get this jacuzzi ball open but they just haven't prepared for this Maverick. Uh, they haven't gotten that control. Damage is going over in favor of the defenders. And NSU, they, they're making the adaptations, but it's not quite in time. As we see SHSU, they're buying time, but the frags are going in favor of the attack. Well, the adaptations are more or less being answered. The attackers are going to get the opening kill for the first time in this series. They might be going for more, but the problem is they have control of the West, but they don't have any crossfires as of yet. They're gonna have to start to rotate their members over to the East and break down this cash hold because they can go for wide swings and they can punish anybody over on a highway. And they're doing exactly that as mad because bad is gonna work his way over to cash CCTV. He has to be wary of looming death all around him as the defenders are waiting for him to cross into their crosshairs. Yeah, you give the attackers control of Jacuzzi, the defense will take control of Cash. Uh, NSU, they got control of this side of the map much earlier into the previous round, but it's now Sam Houston holding on to it later on. Now the trades are coming back in the favor of NSU. They look to have their best hope of a round in taking down Sebev. Now leads effectively a 1v3 for Lost Olympian. But if there's any man that you want to do it, it's him. He has found frag after frag. He's looked so strong. He does have a definite position, but with 30 seconds remaining on the clock, it will be a very difficult ask for him to do. Would have been a Herculean task, but it's not going to work out well for him as he's going to go straight into the attackers, and that is going to be NSU. They're going to win their first attacking ground. Now they've accomplished 50% of their goal. All they need is one more attacking round, and then they go over to their defense. They've made the adaptations. As soon as Maverick was in play, they start to win that round. So hopefully we see Maverick brought once again, and now he's currently being shown. Any more hard breachers gonna be utilized? No thermite to be had, it's going to be an ace. So it's gonna be on the defenders to break down these attackers and try to shut down their hard breaching gadgetry. Yeah, we see the same information denial coming out from the side of Sam Houston, but they will be bringing the double hard breach denial, which will not play in the favor of them as the Maverick has been picked. Triple hard breach coming out from the attackers in this game. It's going to allow them to open up so many angles. It'll allow them Attackers to bypass to so many of the strategies that, uh, that these uh, defenders will have. And it's a great adaptation. However, Sam Houston looked so dominant in the previous time. Yes, they did have a fairly different strategy, but uh, NSU, they will be going into this round fairly blind. They don't know the strategy that Sam Houston have prepped for them. They're not going to have uh, the same idea uh, like they did on the gym site, as well as CCTV, where uh, Sam Houston played fairly similarly to how they did in the first defense rotation. It's going to be a very good challenge uh, for NSU to manage, and five Sam Houston, they can be looking for this 5-1 split that would give them a commanding lead going into this first half. 
So no SSG style roam for Sam Houston. They're gonna like to bunk her on down. Now I would like some type of extension just to that second floor, or maybe the first floor. Snipe away a drone and then rotate back quickly. You want to cripple the attacker's use of those pocket drones because if they have 100% of their drone economy moving into the actual execution, they're gonna drone you out, know exactly where you are, and they're gonna punish you into oblivion. Now you can see the attackers, they understand that oil pit is well clear, and this might lead them to a rush as they know somebody's working his way up secret stairs. Yeah, and we can see Ping 2.0 coming out. They have spotted out those players. They're recognizing where those roamers are playing. But Sam Houston, they have found so much impact with these roamers. And now with Zay moving over to the third floor, it looks like he's gone undetected. That is a massive misstep for the side of NSU. And that's one of the aspects that punished them this first time around. While it isn't the SSG style roam, there's still players on their flank. And it does not look like they have... Uh, adequately dealt with them. They will be in a difficult position, and that is the Maverick taken off the board. That is exactly what we were worrying about. As Zay on the flank, undetected, able to put that R4, put that 416 RB to good work. The Pink 2.0 coming out for the defenders this time around, and now with a minute and 30 seconds remaining on the clock, NSU are hemorrhaging players in map control as SHSU, they're determined to make this a 5-1. Well, they're definitely going to continue to work their way as they punish the attackers for overextending, putting themselves on an island and going for 1v1 exchanges. We saw Maverick self-droning into Big Garage, and well, Jaeger was just waiting for them, and that's a huge oversight. The attackers knew that Jaeger was working his way up secret stairs. He's finally going to get shut down as he's going to overstay his welcome just a little bit too long, and that means, well... The entire first and second floor has now been cleared, but it's still a tall order for the attackers as they're going to actually have to push onto the objective. Yeah, and it's going to be a very difficult position. Now you have a lot of utility uh, off the board. You don't have the opportunities that you were looking for with that Maverick adaptation. While you have found a kill onto the top practice of your opponents, you look at the scoreboard. These are a ton of fragging players. You see each and every single one of the players on Sam Houston. They're set up and ready to frag. And while this is the 22nd meta, and as you are taking it quite literally, as there is less than 20 seconds remaining on the clock, now taking down to almost single digits as they make this execute this is far too good it's gonna be a full send to the site a nitro cell is gonna go out but it's not gonna really find its target kai is gonna get too aggressive and he's gonna be shut on down this is gonna put super on the bomb as it's gonna go down it's zero zero on the clock if he's able to get his gun up he can get some kills but no he won't be able to as soon as he gets off the bomb he finds a steel blade in his head and that is gonna be another round win for the defense as it's gonna be a five one half now we have seen some very defender sided maps. We've seen some very attacker sided maps today. So what is this last series gonna be? Honestly, your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, we saw another, I believe it was either cafe or might have been clubhouse where each team striked back at each other with five one halves back to back. Each team just looked dominant on the defensive side that could be what happens this time around as we see cctv cash coming out but a crucial pick coming out for sam houston is that maverick they will not need to adapt as time goes on as they will be bringing out that operator from the very get-go they will be able to open up those external walls they'll be able to make the extensions uh through cctv they'll be able to get these crossfires enabled much earlier into the rounds and that's something that nsu was lacking they didn't have that ability they only had the ability to make very one-dimensional takes and with uh them not even being able to find any control of garage really all nsu had to do was they had to set up crossfires onto uh construction and with them also having the ability to hard breach deny uh that small bit of wall uh towards the south side of cash uh, you could only push through the door and that was it and if you have four guns trained on that position uh, even if nsu finds the man advantage you're not going to be able to execute uh sam houston are going to be able to deny that
and while uh, NSU are bringing a fairly similar lineup to their opponents, their opponents have adapted earlier on. They look to be the ones that are more prepared for this match, and bringing the Maverick out this early, it's a great sign, and I'm afraid for the side of NSU. They might be staring down the barrel of a match point this early on into the series. We've seen a lot of one-sided games. These two teams are playing for their playoff lives. The winner goes home. This is not the position you want to be in if you are on the defense. Now, this is actually be a Latin American strategy coming out right now, where you do a full extension over into Master Bedroom, and you set up a bunch of rotates to allow your defenders to move throughout the map as fluid as possible. Maverick Tricky is going to come out. It's actually going to be maybe a grenade hole. Try to push away, man, because, man, he has his Kai charge in hand. He's going to go for the trick. There's a third bite on the wall. If he doesn't detonate it quick enough, it's going to be shut down. But he gets the audio cue just in time and rips his thermite charge off. But Maverick isn't actually electing to go for a Maverick trick. They're just trying to open up the wall through brute force. This could be a mistake. Also, Zay is in a position to get aggressive and possibly send himself onto the window. He is actively hunting for Madika's back. Yeah, I understand this play, and I've seen it often when you have a bandit. It's much easier to take out those bandit charges with a frag grenade. But uh, Sebev not able to find the cave charge with his Maverick, and that will be time running down. They're able to get the, the, the Maverick trick off. I don't know if that has fully disabled the, the hard reinforcements, as I don't. Uh, it has. Uh, they're able to get that out of the way, but it is uh, time being costed and a bit of health as now NSU, they're in a very good position. They've held off their opponents for quite some time. They still have a relatively uh, solid map control, but uh, the advantage still is in the side of Sam Houston in comparison to their opponents. They do have the ability to make this uh, two-pronged attack, but Superfetch still with the ability to shut this down. This could be disastrous as Valen just finding the frag. And more frags coming in for Team Blue. Now, off screen, we missed it, but we saw Ash trying to shoot her breaching launcher into the electrified wall, and her gadget doesn't work on electricity, so it was basically put into the void. But who cares about macro strategy when the blue team can storm and flood their way into the pawn site? It's going to be an attacking round win and a wonderful headshot for your secondary hard breach. It is round number eight. It is match point, my friend. Yeah, Valik channeling his inner Shiko on that Hibana finding heads, clicking nothing but that, and just opening up that round. But that was one of the benefits of having uh, multiple angles of attack. There's not just the ability uh, for the defenders to just focus on one angle. There's more than just that. Thermite playing from the outside of CCTV, able to find the Cade, uh, as well as Valak shutting down Superfetch in a beautiful fashion, as well as finding that final kill in cash they just looked so s solid in that round and while they did initially uh find some uh a bit of time going in the favor of the defenders uh, they are a very good team and one that is very prepared for this map and very prepared to adapt and running the similar setup on both teams i would have to give attackers this advantage to over bomb. to the attackers they're not going to look for the same i don't know a uh, very interesting uh maverick hole uh strategy instead they'll just be able to very simply go for the maverick trick uh be able to uh put the onus on the defense to really find aggressive plays early on and uh, while they do put a few holes in the wall that's not nearly enough to uh provide a, a major threat to the maverick while he's going for the trick and nsu they're gonna need something really remaining. special otherwise we're gonna have a very express ride through this Five first map left. and over to the second map uh where shsu they'll be one Attackers map closer to uh to open playoffs and nsu are just uh, a single map away from being sent home early so honestly if you're on the side of nsu you use that tcsg and you shoot the bottom portion of the wall with that slug shotgun and as soon as maverick starts to go for that trick you throw your nitro cell and for whatever reason when you open up the soft wall the nitro cell fragmentation propagation changes and it'll basically kind of curve around the hard barricade 
if that makes sense. It's kind of hard to fathom, but somehow that's just how siege physics works. Now, we also saw that Ash utilized her breaching charge on electrified wall. That will never work. They're going to have to change their strategy and hopefully use that sledgehammer. Zay's already worked his way over into Big Garage. He is hunting for one, but if he keeps putting his flashbangs down range, he might actually get himself caught in a bad situation. And he actually allowed that player to rotate all the way out of rafters. The 180 crossfire has now been established. And here comes a rush on the site. Zane's gonna win his first engagement. And that means the more of the defense are gonna crumble on through. And SMG 11 is gonna get aggressive down out that player. But it's now just a 1v5 with an SMG 11 in hand. A smoke toxic babe is gonna find his target, but he's gonna be forced away, choked out. It's gonna be the fragmentation. It's gonna be lost, winning out that engagement, making the evolution into fragment. Yeah. Uh, NSU, uh, they recognize that, hey, uh, your opponents, they're super strong fraggers. Let's just give them map control and, and seed control of the map. But you can't let Zay just waltz into sight pretty much and find these kills. And NSU, they just let their opponents walk all over them. And that was a dominant 7-1 affair in the first map. And if you're a fan of NSU, that is not what you want to see. That was a dominant performance uh, coming out on the first map. And if that's any uh, preview of what this series is going to be, I am afraid for the side of uh, NSU. And it looks like Sam Houston, while they are on the lower end of the bracket, uh, not able to make the premier playoffs, only uh, now fighting for open playoffs, they look like they've come in more prepared. They've done their VOD review. Uh, and uh, for their frag potential they've eaten their wheaties they are on an absolute tear going into this match well my friend i think you are very accurate with that but we need to give these players five to ten minutes to talk amongst themselves orchestrate their next macro strategy so don't go anywhere we'll be back in about 10 minutes I feel the rain crashing down All around this empty town I'm searching for the lost and found But you don't care, you're unaware Keep moving like the scars aren't even there It's in the air like a blazing flare Bye. 
points in blaming you, you did not know oh. I thought you were the one for me That's why I give you everything That was you crushed by the stormy seas Oh, you meant the world to me Alright, thank you very much for rejoining us on our second map. We're heading over to the Tuscan Hills for a date at Villa between Sam Houston and NSU. It was a fairly dominant first match, but NSU moving to their map pick of Villa. They will have the strategic advantage on their side. They will be able uh, to take the strategies that they prepped into this match, and we'll have our first glimpse at those as we move into the ban phase. Uh-oh, it's going to be a Nomad ban, which means it's going to be Rotation Heaven if you want to play aggressive. Now, you can counter that out as an attacker if you do your due diligence with your flank drones. We're going to have to see who is going to be joining Ma Nomad in the ban phase. It's most likely going to be Thatcher, but you can also couple that with an additional hard breacher just to remove some of the lethality of the attackers. And there he is, Ace now removed. Now, we saw in Vulnerable Kaids in map number one, Villa is another map that has a lot of potential within Vulnerable Kaids. If I was playing this game, I would eat him straight out, but nope, it's gonna be one of the other oppressive operators. It's gonna be Mira. Now, uh, the the thing about Invulnerable Kaids is that they are vulnerable uh, to Thatcher, and that is an operator that we pretty much always see banned, but with Nomad and Ace being the attacking bans, uh, Thatcher's not banned. 
he's still on the table he'll still be able to shut those down and we will see uh two very different uh defensive bands mira uh, pretty much always banned on this map we usually see uh at least if my notes are correct, uh, Mira and Echo uh, being banned out, as well as the Maestro, uh, as they are very powerful for that information in Plant Denial. But with Echo still being disabled due to the glitch with his yokais being invulnerable, we will not have to worry about him this time around. We'll have to see uh, less of that information coming out for the defenders. And with the Thermite ban, uh, with the Thatcher ban not coming in, I would have to favor this much more to the attackers as they'll be able to uh, push their way onto site much quicker. That being said, uh, NSU not running the Thatcher, it's going to be interesting. They're not going to be able to deal with the Cade and Bandit charges uh, as easily. And with only Hibana as your hard breacher you're going to struggle to open up these angles and it's going to rely on much more of that gun skill uh as well as their utility uh centering around that bomb. lion which is an operator that we don't see all too often now on clubhouse nsu i think had a better understanding of the strategy at least their overarching strategy seemed to be better they understood how to play that map that wasn't their map pick it is now NSU's turn to deliver their map pick here on Villa. So if we can see the same type of macro strategies being pulled out, they might be able to put some rounds down range and try to knock Sam Houston off and deliver us into map number three. But the thing is with Sam Houston, they're really relying on their mechanical gun skill to win rounds instead of macro strategies. So if Sam Houston is able to basically identify the holes in NSU's strategy, they can basically just go for the teeth and go for the choke. Yeah, and last time around we saw at NSU, they were able to adapt to the strategies of their opponents, but it was too little too late. They were only able to find one round as an advantage uh, as a result of them being able to play the Maverick. And once it moved to the basement, uh, Sam Houston being able to adapt to a fairly different style uh, to counter the adaptation, they were able to uh, round that half out 5-1. Now, NSU, uh, the ball's in their court. They have the ability uh, to start to wake up. It, it was a fairly slow start in the first game, and it might be the same thing here as Superfetch is the first man taken out with the strong Rome Valak. Uh, he found so many frags on this first game. Him and Zay were so oppressive on the Rome, and it looks like they're going to continue that form into this second map. Unfortunate for NSU, they didn't do their due diligence with setting up their pre-entry drones. So you have to stage a drone over here on Master if you're going to go for this take which they are. Zay might be going for a run out. He's going to think better about that. And now prone in this position for the time being. But when you're attacking on this bombsite AVG and clearing all the way from the north, if you have to put two at minimum drones over here and start to basically clear out the entire map, they skip that I'm stage. Reloading. And unfortunately, they're going to lose more players to the meat driver that is, well, Houston. Well, finally, the answer back to happens. going to be the AUG A2 on attack. IQ is going to find a killer of her own. She's going to be looking out for more. With the attackers, they're on complete other sides of the map. They need to join up together and go for their execute. Yeah, they'll be in a 2v4 setup. It is a very dire situation, but it is a good start. They're having their players wake up. Zeros uh, able to put that AUG A3 to work. We typically see the GA coming out, but it's an interesting weapon pick, and they will be able to uh, have an opportunity to have that shine, but it has just been the gunfights going in the fa favor of Sam Houston, uh, and NSU, they'll have the ball in their court. It is a more defender-sided map. Villa is uh, very strong in terms of the roam, and Zay uh, putting that to good work as we see Zay and Valak just once again stepping up there, incredibly oppressive, and NSU, they'll look uh for these later rounds to try and counter that try and find ways to shut these two players down and if they're able to do so they'll be able to shut down these horizontal extensions much earlier into the round the attackers just need to synergize when it comes to their executes they need to communicate organize and execute on the master bedroom together coming through multiple windows especially when defenders open up windows you have to be very wary of somebody lurking on by and sadly, the attackers just went for over-aggression, and they met the 416 and MP7. But this is actually going to be a great adaptation. It is going to be Monty here in play, and he's going to be an operator to basically push 
the defenders away for Master Bedroom. But that's the problem. It's going to be the attacker's turn to now basically do the exact opposite execute. Instead of pushing from the north side of the map, they're going to be pushing from the south side of the map, clearing out study and planes and games. Attackers need to locate and defuse as many Yeah, and it will can. be a very interesting setup. We don't see Oryx being used all too often. Uh, he's a very interesting operator, and I think Sam Houston, they are uh, a, a team that is very versatile. They can play a ton of different strategies. They'll be able to adapt uh, as much. Now, uh, NSU will be adapting with a very different setup. They recognize how uh, pertinent the roams were for their opponents, and they have brought not just the gridlock to shut those down, but they've also brought the jackal. And that will allow them to hunt down their opponents. Ten Zay is able to have massive uh, movement abilities with the that Five Rima down. He's able to cover a lot of grounds. But if you have more players than just Attackers the Oryx on the roam, you're going to have a tough time evading Attackers this massive map control and uh, combining the uh, area denial of the gridlock with the, uh, the pretty much the ability to force homers to move out of their current location uh with the jackal they'll be in a very good position to uh corner and hunt down these two players uh that have proved uh to be such a difficult uh, tr uh trial for uh shsu of malik and zay and they'll be able to find themselves in roads into these rounds uh in the way of shutting down these horizontal sides well, the attackers, they're going to have to deal with planes and games. This extension is going to be the most important thing. It's going to be a nice headshot coming from Zay. He's going to spot the head of wine. That is mad because bad. And he's the best operator at dealing with this extension. Utilizing, well, his feet sniffing ability. He can drone out the entire map by getting free pings. Now, something that the defenders haven't actually looked at as of yet is the extension from the attackers over to 90, which basically means they won't be able to rotate anywhere close to that. So their only option is main stairs, which Zay is gonna currently utilize as he finds himself in another engagement. He's gonna try to punish a player. Shots exchanged, but no real HP lost whatsoever. Yeah, and NSU, one of the uh, things that could be going wrong with them is the fact that this is T3. A lot of teams have a lot of roster moves. They don't have the opportunity to play with them a lot of the time, and that could be one of the issues that are facing them as we see another kill from Lost Olympian. Valak with an amazing headshot on Tribal, shutting them down. It is now a 2v5, a difficult position, nigh unwinnable uh, for the attackers. And uh, while this is a good start, they're getting themselves in contention for playoffs. It's a good opportunity. They're not bottom of the table. Uh, they do need to go back to the drawing board because they are just absolutely uh, falling victim to these roams time and time again. And while we see uh, good indications for them, they're, they're playing the jackal as well as the gridlock to approach that it's just not quite enough their adaptations are getting there but it's a slow start once again and sam houston they just look like uh they've been the team that has adapted quicker they've put more time into the strategies and zeros uh lurking on the first floor likely just having a tactical timeout as they figure out how best to approach these later rounds in this second map IQ is going to be dry ping with the default camera. Finally shot away. A Nitro Cell is going to direct Impactor, but it's going to be the fast aim, and that's going to be a wonderful showing in round number two. The aggression is just paying off. There's the bouncing Nitro Cell. And honestly, on paper, NSU's strategy seems to be better. They seem to have a better understanding of how to create a master strategy, the macro strategy. But when it comes to implementation and especially executing on an attack, I think it falls just a little bit flat. So if they're able just to synergize, communicate amongst themselves, they can start to win out some rounds. Now, 4-2 splits are common and they can start to drive themselves to that. Yeah, and that's one of the things that is apparent with this game. It is not just strategy you can't just rely on uh playing those chess pieces correctly you have to execute them and knowing just the theory behind it with they which uh as you were saying they clearly do they're not quite able to adapt accordingly now bringing out the thatcher that'll yeah, allow them to, to uh, basically just disable half of the utility that the defenders have on their side you won't have to deal with uh, as many of those ads as well as those 
when Lucy charges, uh, and you'll be able to bypass them. That is one of the adaptations that we haven't seen them do. Uh, leaving the Thatcher on the board, it, it's a very powerful operator, and he's banned out pretty much all the time for a very good reason. He allows you to step up the tempo, and one of the biggest issues for NSU on the first map was time. Uh, they were able to find these executes, but they were just too late in, in to go out. And uh, they were just picked apart by the superior positioning of their opponents, uh, which they were able to do because they had time on their side. Now with a Thatcher on the board, they'll be able to uh, alleviate some of that pressure, find early map control. They'll be able to bypass those bandit batteries and get themselves control of the second floor. But it will come down to execution once again. They have the idea. They have the strategy there. They just need to be able to execute upon that base foundation. Is this a coat hold? And is that an LMGE, my friend? I think it is. Now, the LMGE can dish out pain and suffering. It has 150 bullets in a magazine. And remember, the Alda only has 82. So you can hold mouse one. And if you're on the receiving end of that monstrosity, you're not. You're likely to leave that exchange in a body bag. The coat hold has been dealt with. And then now, our poor castle, he is going to start to find the LMGE. But it's going to be the wall bag headshot. Who needs 180? 80 bullets or 150 bullets when you can just hit headshots to the wall good droning coming out by nsu but their execution falls just like but they are finding these frags they're collapsing on these roamers they're not allowing them to fall back onto site and that's one something that we saw coming out from sebev he found the initial frag but he fell back immediately now we can see the thatcher coming in it allows tribal to bypass those bandit batteries and any jammers that could have been there for the defense they're getting an inroad in sight and they have a very good chance of finding their first round in this map the avenue has been created, but they're going to have to find their way by making the avenue even bigger. Zeros is going to do exactly that, and she's going to get another kill. It's now just a 1v4. Orange team is in control of this round, and it's just going to be today an almost an impossible scenario. He's going to put two on the grave. Does he hear the one coming through jungle? He will as he confirms oh. that he's slightly off to kill him. Not like pistol and is safe. Just a 1v4. The man is unstoppable for today. My god, that was a nearly impossible situation, but he was just able to isolate those 1v1s. NSU recognized where he was. They tried to push him, but he was just playing that position perfectly. He isolated his 1v1s and he hit every single shot, running that MP7 dry with its ludicrously fast fire rate, swapping to the P12 and hitting every single one of his shots. Unfortunate to say that at least for NSU, they were able to bring it down to the wire, but Sam Houston, they've just been such a strong fragging lineup. And Zay, we saw him in the first map just absolutely go ham. That was a ridiculous play coming out from him. I'm still speechless, Al. My brain is trying to wrap my head around what just happened. And I always am critical of Defenders teams for not presenting themselves, you know, with, well, 1v4 engagement. But actually, NSU almost attempted that. They pushed him from two different fronts, and he was just able to flick back and forth. So maybe if NSU pushed that engagement with about, I don't know, a synergization of like half a second, a couple milliseconds, they pushed together, it would have been a completely different round. Again, NSU has the right idea. They understand what they're doing. They're just skipping steps along the way. They're rushing themselves and they make mistakes when they rush unfortunately with every clutch situation being in, in that manner a 1v4 that Zay had in his hands there is just an exploitation of, of a mistake coming out from the defenders there's no way that you are able to get that in a perfect scenario and NSU uh unfortunately in that round grabbing victory uh, grabbing defeat, sorry, from the jaws of victory uh, right there, but it's a good sign. Uh, they got themselves into an, in an initially good position. They were able to clear out the roamers and force uh, Sam Houston out of position, but it will be a return to this very feared site, and unfortunately, uh, they're making one of their mistakes that they did this first time around. They're not running the factor. They're not going to be able to open up the um, walls uh, into 
aviation core uh into art and it's going to us uh, they're going to struggle with that they're going to need to make this horizontal take work they're going to need to take these roamers out sooner rather than later otherwise it's going to be more of the same dominant roaming presence from zay and valid in these rounds i think there's a ping 2.0 over near zay because we saw the attacker is basically pinging into oblivion. So his position might be known. The hunting pack is coming. Be very careful, Valak. They're not too far away. Valak has no idea. He's going to be looking the wrong way. Mad because Bad might get one of the most free kills of his life. His back is still turned. He's going to creep his way up the stairs. He's going to spot that of Jaeger, but he's going to be shut down. Fortunately for them, it was a hunting pack. Rome as it's going to be a refrag and actually wait. Wait, what on earth happened over there? There was no free frag whatsoever. How, how on earth is Sam Houston still in control of this round as my parsec crashes? Actually, I think everyone's parsec crashed in this. Lobbies are be diving back over to the prep phase. We're we'll have to see what exactly happened over here. But it was a phenomenal showing by both of these teams. Round number four is kicking off in phenomenal fashion as we dive over to caster cams. Yeah, that was a dominant performance by Sam Houston in the first parts of this half so far. Uh, NSU, so close. Just so close. They could taste victory. Not quite there. Uh, it was exciting to see. Uh, it does look to be another map going in the favor of Sam Houston. And uh, it is a, a learning process for both teams as we move into these later uh, maps in the later uh, parts of this game. It'll be exciting to see how it plays out. Uh, the rest of Villa. Villa, one of our most uh, common matches. Uh, and we will be, unfortunately, extending it to a very brief fake. We'll break. We'll be back very shortly with this remaining action.
you make me wanna talk back Talk back to you Say you say you like that If I hate you then Find someone new Baby but you know I never will No So I choke Welcome back to map number two. We currently find ourselves in round number five. Now, if I remember correctly, round number four went in favor of NSU, not in favor of Blues. We're gonna have to confirm that with admin, but we actually did see a phenomenal showing of what we saw in round number four from NSU as they basically steamrolled their way up past their stairs. Their assault was so strong, it crashed the game. Yeah, and we will uh, we will see them move over to the second, second floor site. And unfortunately for NSU, uh, while they did have an initial steamroll, it was a steamroll that met an untimely end. As once again, we see Sam Houston finding their frags. And we were talking about this in the middle uh, of our break uh, amongst the casters and a bit of our producer banter that NSU, they have a very good grasp of the game. They obviously have done their strat preps, they've done their uh, their VOD review, but it just comes down to the execution. Uh, maybe it's their IGL not being assertive enough, and maybe it's a lack of uh, scrimming enough, but they haven't been able to uh, put their execution in uh, with a timely tempo. They have the building blocks there, they have the fundamentals, but it's not coming together quite in time and we can see that coming out once again as uh, Sam Houston they're just exploiting the tempo as tribal uh, he will commit honorable sudoku falling off the building and uh, Sam Houston they just look to be steamrolling as we see some frags coming back they're favored the G8 does go burr as we see Treybone playing it but it will still be an absolute mountain to climb for the two fraggers of the IQ and Ash well, the G8 does what it does best, clicking on heads. The bomb was surrendered. It's going to be baited out by Zeros as he's going to find one, attempting the second. But it's going to be Valak cleaning that up. And now it's just a 1v2 with Treybone on so little HP. But you don't need HP when you have one of the best attacking weapons in game. It is going to be the G8, but it doesn't have an angled grip. It has a vertical grip. Yeah, and it will be a very difficult position for him to be in. He is one tap to any of these weapons. And while the MPX might not be the best hardest hitting weapon, it will be able to fell him in one shot. The Deagle as well. But Trey Bone finding that frag and finding it cleanly will get himself into a position. But the flank coming out from Dalek will guarantee him that kill with the Deagle. And Sam Houston, while these rounds are now coming down to the wire, now they're not winning them as nearly as dominantly as they were before the rehosts are still going in their favor and they have won the penultimate round of the half they are now on the final round and they look to find them a clean sweep on the defense six zero honestly sam houston is making a lot of mistakes the majority of them are from overextensions they're getting far too aggressive and remember sam is really relying on the mechanical skill to win out rounds but that is something that you can't rely on every single round and sadly they put themselves in a very losable position with a nice flank on through. The one dig is what's going to clean up round number five. And as you mentioned, here we go. It is round number six. And if the attackers win this round, they'll find themselves in a strong position, or at least a better position if they move themselves over into the half. But if it is a six, oh, it's going to be looking scary for NSU. And I think that uh, for NSU, it's not exactly about winning the series as it is so far in their opponent's favor. It's more about uh, finding some final uh, feelings in this uh, in this bracket. Uh, they might be uh, very far away from playoffs, but as teams moving into the collegiate scene, it's about building your experience, building your roster up, finding how to play the game, how to get these comms, and the experience is very valuable. And 
one of the best experiences that you can have as a team is going up against a team that is better than you. And while uh, Sam Houston remain. might not be all that much better than, than them as they are making mistakes, NSU Five has a lot to learn from three. their opponents in terms of how uh, the tempo is playing uh, for them. Uh, they're executing on their play style, and while it may not be the best decisions, they're making their decisions in a timely manner, and they're avoiding uh, the bane of time. They're making their uh, decisions quickly, and once they make their decisions, they follow through with them. And uh, oftentimes, that allows them to decisively take action. And uh, NSU, they, they make the right decision time and time again. They might make the right call in terms of, in terms of the strategy, sorry. But they're not making the decision soon enough. And if they're able to uh, pick up the tempo, they'll be able to find these rounds. They'll be able to find at least something before uh, they shift on to the second half. So when you're executing onto, well, the east side of the map, you have to have boots on the ground in the first 20 seconds of the round, taking control of Master Bedroom. NSU currently isn't doing that, and it's actually going to be the defender's turn as they try to retake that top floor, but the Jackal Pings will be getting away. Sadly, the primary rehost, well, or I guess the primary fragger will be kicked out of the lobby, and since it's past the prep phase, it will not be a rehost. Yeah, and that's unfortunate to say the least for the side of NSU going into this round with the man disadvantage. Sam Houston now has the ability to not overextend. They just don't need to take these fights. They don't need to find the man advantage. They already have that gifted that over to them for free, but they will be doing just that. And that could be a mistake if they go down, but they're finding the frags. The trade frags coming in favor. Uh, Treybone after the rehost has looked so strong, but he will be shut down by Zay on the converse side. And uh, NSU now in a 2v4, we've seen them close these round back so close but it is just looking so difficult for them and it is a mountain for them to climb well hopefully they're able to break down this mountain bring your bulldozers bring your nuclear bombs and tell that mountain who is boss the orange team they're gonna have to push they're gonna have to find their diffuser frag grenade is gonna try to push out the prone prone player over by maps it's not gonna land anywhere near its target now preset drones will be allowing habana of tribal to rotate on through they actually do have their diffuser in their back pocket i did misspeak on that so vertical destruction will come through allowing them to make a rotation of their own and start to work their way towards the bomb site vertical destruction is going to continue to help with that forcing the defensing positions away from comfortable locations but zay is going to do what he does best he's on a big rotate he might have a flank sledge is going to look the wrong way and now it's just going to be a 1v4 with so little time left of the clock the wide swing comes on through that's going to be the flawless half a 6-0 yeah, and NSU, they look so strong starting out some of these rounds, but they just have not been able to piece it together. They will rotate over to the second half on defense. This is a game of two halves. The fundamental play styles are very different on the attacking side as well as the defense. But in a 6-0, there is only so much you can do. Their backs are up against the wall. We have seen teams come back, but... It will be a monumental task as we see a very interesting setup come out from their opponent, the Lion, the Dukebi, an operator that we haven't seen all that much so far. And the sixth pick coming from the Hibana could be a very interesting strategy, to say the least, from Sam Houston. Under the Finca. Oh, it's well, we're talking about LATAM style strategies. We talked about it on map number one, which was club, and we're gonna be talking about it once again. It's gonna be Finka yeah, rushes, and we're gonna have to see at how Sam Houston elects to go for this. Now, they might be just doing a full send rush. I mean, Lion is in play, coupled with Dokubi. Maybe they just want to end out this series. But what we've seen is when Sam gets far too aggressive, they skip steps, and NSU can basically abuse that strategy. And we've also been highlighting how NSU seems to understand macro strategies. And this is a very complex strategy that they're setting up. This is going to be that coat extension. 
and you always open up the middle panel, reinforce the two outer ones, so you can have usually smoke behind their playable shield, get aggressive, and go for the wide swing. I absolutely love the strategy that NSU is bringing out, and we're going to have to see if Sam Houston is able to break it down. Yeah, it's a very interesting strategy, and Sam Houston, they're looking to play uh, their style. They're looking to play off of their strengths, and their strength is their fragging potential. They will be Finca boosting off the rip, and already they're making themselves known on the site. The Sausig coming out from Valak, but it will not be able to find anything as Draybone continuing his form on this map, but NSU are falling uh, victim to absolutely nothing, sorry, as SHSU finding uh, absolutely no purchase in the round. They're rushing, but only to their deaths. Sometimes the full sin just doesn't work out, and this is going to be a double DMR round. Uh-oh, make sure you look the right way, because if you don't, you're going to be shut on down, and it's going to be the M590 finding that player, and now it's just a 1v4. Now, we have seen 1v4 clutches in this series, in particular here in map number two, so Lost Olympian could do that, but it's going to be very difficult, to say the least. Yeah, this SMG-12 is a, a shell of what it used to be, uh, and barely able to find the first kill. Damage, unfortunately, going over, and more importantly, information. Going with the, the Sausage as well as the double DMR, I don't want to call it, but it seems like a bit of a meme round coming out from Sam Houston. They have such a lead. They're able to uh, make these uh, plays, but it's a good sign from NSU. They're not falling blunder to everything uh, that Attackers Sam Houston throws at them. They're dropped. able to exploit the weaknesses of Attackers their opponent. The uh, but time ticking down, Sam Houston, they still have an opportunity. It looks like this will be a first round on the board and no clean sweep for the side of Sam Houston. The SMG-11 is no, going to be it's going to be target, the 180 degree flick shot, yes please, and that's now just going to be a 2v1 engagement, it might be in favor of the attackers, but the SMG-11 is lurking up the classical hallway, and it's going to find a kill of its own, it's going to be NSU, they're going to win round number 7, and well, sometimes when you throw the meme rounds, they don't work out well for you. And honestly, I'd be concerned when we see attacking rosters try to do the YOLO type plays. It doesn't really work out and it changes their overall mindset. So do be very wary of that. We also did see this coming out on our previous map too, of that being Oregon. We saw a bit of an interesting strategy, the full send on to the basement through storage, and that also felt met a very untimely end. While the round did not uh, progress nearly as slowly as this one did, um, the, the result was very much the same, and the play style of their team after that round was very much the same as well, as they returned to a very si to locate and similar setup. A bit of banter in the uh, chat about uh, some missed shots from the valkyrie uh, allowing that very stylish 180 uh degree flick shot to happen but it will be a first round on the board nsu avoid very humiliating 7-0 but uh, going on to their opponents they will have a, a ton of utility on the board the soft destruction of the zofia as well as the hard breach duo of the hibana as well as the Thermite. This is a very uh, strong lineup uh, combined with the Lion that we've seen, I believe, more in this series uh, than in like any of the games that I've ever passed uh, for Collegiate Rainbow Six. Well, a sensible lineup now coming out for Sam Houston. Hopefully they're able to break this strategy down, at least if you're a fan of them. Now, Sam Houston is going to be doing a South Execute all stimming from study. The problem with this strategy is it doesn't set up enough crossfires unless you start to rotate some of your manpower over to 90 window, where there you can make it work out. But the rotation is going to have to come out from one of your hard breachers and preferably Habana. But Zay already finds himself working his way up through main entrance and maybe through main stairs. Here comes his impact grenades. He's going to think better about that because he has the audio cue of Mad Cuz Bad. Yeah, and they will be able to find that information, but they will have to 
execute on it. And uh, we can see the drone economy still very strong for the attackers moving into this round. NSU still have very strong Stop positions, uh, but the lion charge will come in. That will allow SHSU to push onto site. They're not exploiting it all that much as Zero's holding well, on for dear attackers. life. This is a very contentious position. And any of these gunfights could pretty much determine the round. If SHSU are able to force these defenders out of position, they have a ton of map control. But if NSU is able to win these ones, if they're able to hold this position back, they're able to hold map control and get these crossfires enabled. And they're doing just that with Superfetch on that T5 SMG, able to start out this round good for the side of NSU. 90 second warning is going to chime. The attackers going to have to have a little bit more map control if they want to clear out and go for their execute. A nice cross cover fire, and that's going to allow, well, the attackers to work their way into study and start to utilize your thermite. The wall is going to be opened up, and that means you're going to have a nice long line of sight over in gun vault, which means that power position by the defenders will no longer be a factor. Now, off screen, Lion's gonna take a lot of damage. It's because of the vertical holes that NSU set up. He's gonna find an M590, but Thermite's gonna get that refrag. He's gonna be hunting back for more, but Play Dude's always gonna be working his way up the red stairs. They don't know where he is. Kill's gonna come through the kill feed, and now it's just gonna be the Alda as well as at T590 against the onslaught of the attackers. Buck's gonna go for the wide swing. There's the Alda. It's gonna come on knocking. He's gonna try to find a kill. He's going to be forced to reload. He still has plenty of bullets left in his magazine. So he doesn't have to do that as of yet, unless he wants to turn all the way to 82 bullets. Tapping away with the all that's going to work out well for them as play dude is going to be shut down. And well, now it's the attacker is stuck in almost an impossible, unwinnable scenario as Havana is sitting on her 25 HP. She's going to have to put the bomb down on the ground or go for the plan. She's going to find the opening kill and Super Fitch is going to work his way closer over to you, Bar. He doesn't know where the plan is. He's going to go for the pray fire. The bomb is and that's gonna be the t5 cleaning the round up what a close round that came down to the very wire nsu able to hold on for dear life it could have swung either way in the final seconds the t5 smg just coming out on top with super fetch having just a tad bit more health uh coming into that engagement but i think uh shsu they they were a bit slow on to that attack they needed that buck to come into position much earlier if he was able to get that pincer move he would have been able to avoid uh, a lot of casualties in the early rounds uh sam houston they really struggled to push Treybone out of position that uh that shotgun as well as the smg 11 able to find so much damage in that round uh, however nsu they were able to play patiently they never over aggressed and uh, while they were uh pushed out of position zeros's uh power position was forced out of um real relevancy he still had the op the opportunity to uh go for the flank and he was able to find a kill he was traded out, but with the man advantage for the side of NSU, trades are something that is very that much in their favor. Whittling the man count down it, in a, a 4v3, uh, a 3v2 is much better. And NSU played that very well. A tray bone after the rehost. Uh, it's been, I believe, four rounds, and he's found nine kills on the board. That is absolutely ridiculous coming out from them. And one thing that we said about NSU is they weren't winning their gunfights in the first attackers. map. They are stepping up, and Trayvon has been just this hero fragging player for the side of NSU. It's great to see them start to wake up, and while it may be a bit too late, it's a great sign for them as they move into the later stages, into Five winter, uh, while they will be able to uh, really prep and uh, figure out what went wrong and Attackers address those issues as they move the into later tournaments. Well, the attackers will now be relinquished from their spawns, what could be the last time in this overall series. The attackers, they're gonna have to take the top floor control as soon as possible and utilize that vertical destruction. The problem with that strategy is NSU is currently putting up a lot of manpower on that top floor. 
which means Sam Houston could go for a full send YOLO rush, but they're going to think better about the decision and actually clear out the entire first, or pardon me, second floor. There is a lot of utility coupled by castle barricades and mute jammers. This is going to be very difficult to do, but fortunately you have a Thatcher on the board. Yeah, and that Thatcher is one of those operators that allows you to speed up the tempo, and that allows you to bypass a lot of the gadgetry, the hard breach denial, the, the denial that you have on the side of the attackers, and uh, they are able to find these initial kills. Trevo trading out that kill for his double digits after the rehost, an absolutely incredible performance, two kills per round, and he's not even done just yet as sam houston they're trying to find vertical control they have control of the second floor and that is very powerful but they will need to execute onto the first floor they have time in their hands a minute and 40 seconds is more than enough time to make this execute happen they just need to carry on this tempo from the early game into the mid game and they look like they're doing just that as they're now denying those mute jammers they're getting lost olympian to open up these walls they as well as valak are finding these frags and nsu they're going to hold on for dear life trying to stave off match point for just that tad bit longer but the frag might coming in they just want to end it here for sam Houston. Here comes a pounce on the site. It's going to work out perfectly for Sam Houston as they put one lone defender left alive. It is going to be the 416 Carbine versus the world and versus four members of the blue roster. Zeros is going to find one. He spots the head of a bunch of them rushing on through. But it's going to be the triple crossfire. It's going to shut him on down. And that's going to be Sam Houston winning out map number two and winning the entire series. But honestly, NSU in the last few rounds looked like a completely different roster. If we we're able to see more NSU and this series, at least like that, I think we would have seen three maps. It took them a while to warm up, but once they warmed up, they were hitting shots. Yeah, an absolutely ridiculous performance from Treybone after the rehost, but that goes to show the very big weaknesses of this team of NSU. It was a bit too little too late with their adaptations in the first map. They started to pick up that Maverick, but that was the final two rounds of the half. And at that point, they didn't find the impact that they needed. Yes, they were able to win a round and win a round in dominant fashion, but they need to make those adaptations earlier. Uh, going into the second map, very same thing happened. Uh, a dominant first half coming out from their opponents. And while they were able to uh, set themselves up, they got some very close rounds. And uh, that's got to hurt losing a 1v4 uh, if you are on the side of the four. Um, they were able to keep themselves strong. They were able to find two rounds in that second half. And they looked like a different team. But that's the same issue. Uh, they need to find these adaptations earlier on. And while it is a good start, it is just a good start. Uh, we haven't seen uh, enough of them yet to really be certain of their play style. They were in contention for playoffs, which means that they did uh, find some success in the earlier stages of the group stage. And I'll be excited to see how they develop their strategies, how they develop their players moving into the offseason and into later the winter season of CR6. Honestly, Al, I concur, right? We saw NSU start to evolve throughout this series. And if you give them a few more months to work together and synergize and create better strategies, because their strategies are on point. Honestly, all they need to do is work on their mechanical skill because they have the strategies, they have that backbone. And then once that happens, they look like a completely lethal team. And when we move into our winter series, I think they're going to be probably one of the most underrated teams and some you're going to have to watch out for. Yeah. Uh, that being said, though, we have been singing the praises of this team uh, for pretty much the entire series as it is uh, a, a dominant performance from Sam Houston. And uh, with that performance uh, in two very quick maps, they have booked themselves a ticket to the open playoffs. And we do have an interview coming up with one of those players. I'll be excited to see how they broke down their strategies, how they were able to uh, set themselves up aggression uh and we do have zay the coach and one of the top fraggers coming out from sam houston a dominating performance welcome to the casting desk hey how's it going 
Wonderful, my friend. Congrats on your series win. And thank more you, importantly, you. congrats on booking your one-way ticket into open playoffs. Now let's talk about some macro strategy quickly. Let's talk about the Legion ban on map number one. Uh, okay, so the reason Legion is one of our common bans, the reason we ban Legion is because uh, the way my team likes to play, we like to get in your face and we like to be aggressive. Uh, the Legion, you know, that's a big counter to if you're being aggressive. So uh, we figured we'd go for the ban so we could free up some space where my players can get in and get some frags. So why Legion over Malusi? Uh, big reason? Because we utilize Malusi, to be honest, because she's broken. That's kind what? of it. <laughs> that's more than fair. Now, I want to know, what was comms like during that impeccable 1v4 clutch? Uh, the 1v4 clutch, as soon as everyone died, I just I just yelled comms. Everyone stopped being quiet. And then as soon as it ended, everyone was screaming. It was it was really crazy. Uh, I was really happy with it. But um, we just, we've kind of practiced for situations like that because a lot of the times our players can't play, so our subs sub in and our subs aren't the best. But uh <laughs> But um, so we, we practice for um, playing by ourselves and being quiet and focusing up so we can drown out all the noise and just focus on what's ahead of us. And that's winning the round. Now, moving forward to playoffs, what strategies are going to start to utilize? Are you going to be saving maps? What maps are going to be in your pool? Let's just start that whole conversation. Uh, what maps do we want to get rid of? We want to get rid of Oregon. Um, we're always going to ban Oregon. Um, any team we play against, we're always banning Oregon. Um, as for the reason why, um, I don't, we just don't like the map, to be honest. I don't like the rework, and we don't really have strats for it, so it's our first ban every round. Um, but that's kind of our only ban. Uh, other than that, we're open to any map to play. So a six-map pool. I like it. All right, Mr. L, I've been hogging this interview. I'm going to pass it over to you. Yeah, uh, not much more to say. That was a pretty dominant performance. Amazing to see that controlled aggression working out. Uh, that being said, with you booking your ticket to the open playoffs, is there anyone you want to shout out? Anyone who made that journey possible? Uh, the stage is yours. Uh, big thing. I mean, I just want to shout out, you know, my team and everyone. I know a lot of people have looked at, at uh, my school and my team as being, you know, underdogs um, just because our history. We haven't necessarily been the best team every season. We haven't been consistent. Uh, last season, myself and a couple of other players, we decided to sit out. Uh, but this season, we're back and we're ready to prove people what we can do. Okay. Wonderful well, to hear, I'm my friend. To see how you guys do. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to clean up round, or pardon me, week number five. And that means the regular season has ended. But postseason, that will be taking place next week. So tune in. But until then, stay safe. Stay well, and we'll be back with you next week. in the sky gazing far into the night i raise my hand to the fire but it's no use because you can't stop it from shining through it's true baby let the light shine through if you believe it's true baby won't you let the light
the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through. It's true, baby, let the light. 